Hey, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, first off, before we get started, I want to say thank you so much to everybody that's been subscribing and who has been watching these things. Um, when I started doing these, I did it as kind of like a way to um, just do something extra with the guys that I meet, like James here. And I thought it would be interesting for you guys to get to know them and get to know me also. I know some of you guys like to complain about me talking so much but you know i mean i want i want to talk too i mean that's the whole point that i'm doing this for, for both of us to kind of learn about each other so um but i appreciate all the comments and i appreciate all the feedback i'm good, trying to get better again I, when i started this it was really just for fun but i'm glad that you guys are liking it i hope you're liking it and you're subscribing um hopefully it gets a little bit bigger and i and i get to get more people like james here so Without further ado, this is James. Hey, James, uh, say hi. Hello. Yay. How are you? Yes. All right. So James is from the state of Philadelphia. Not state of grace. We're not talking about Taylor Swift. We're talking about <laughs> where, where I'm from. Where he's from. And he is from Florida. He's lived in Florida for how long? Two years. Two years. Okay, cool. So what, what got you to Florida? Um, well, I was living in Philadelphia for a long time downtown throughout the city area and eventually i think the city life just kind of wasn't really for me anymore mm -hmm. and i think after covid it was kind of nice to get a little refreshing break oh my god i'm gonna get so much hate for this but i was like <laughs> let me move to florida it sounds fun and actually i wanted to move to miami originally but at that time it was really it was really unaffordable it was super expensive but not only was it expensive it was like near impossible to even find an apartment um everything i'd find like 48 hours later, it was already under contract, rented out. Right. So I ventured up slightly north and ended up in Fort Lauderdale. Nice. So Fort Lauderdale, Florida, I have, I know a couple of people from there and I know it's not really a big city, but, um, you, you got to Fort Lauderdale, blah, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, and I'm not going to talk shit about Florida. I mean, you know, <laughs> I get it. You know, it's, a, it has nice weather. There's a that. lot to talk shit about. Yeah, that. I know, but you know, I get that you're there. So you also, we're, we'll get into more of that in a second. So, uh, you kind of rose to fame just recently and I say fame, but I mean, you've kind of gotten a lot more attention in the past month or so, um, on social media. Can you tell everybody what your Instagram is? Yeah. So my Instagram is James lucky S Z and that kind of is shortened for season. It stands for James Lucky Season. Ah, I was yeah. wondering what that was. I thought it was like SZA or like... The SC came first and then the season came after. I just <laughs> improvised. <laughs> okay. Well, I like it. Go for it. Go for it. Um, but yeah, so I actually started my Instagram and TikTok about three weeks, just over three weeks ago, maybe three weeks in a day. And my OnlyFans at the same time. And I actually had the OnlyFans for a couple months prior, but I hadn't done any promotion. I really just kind of loaded it up and kind of had it so that when I was ready to come along to it, it was already set up and ready to go. Nice. So everything really has been three weeks, so it's been really new. Things have been moving really quickly, which I'm grateful for, but it's also, it's a lot to kind of hold on to at one time. You know, it's a wild ride. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Well, I'm sure like you get, I, I the only word that I can think of is a lot of attention from a lot of people, right? Like I would say so, yeah. 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 Um, what's the biggest uh, thing that people usually, uh, draw towards you like what do they what do they usually say They're like oh my god your nose i just want to like, <laughs> well, i do whipped cream all <laughs> over it there's just so much space for whipped cream so, yeah, all over yeah there's so much real estate <laughs> it's funny because I, nobody talks about my nose until i talk about my nose mm. and when i'm taking selfies obviously there's a, a lot to talk about when it comes to my nose <laughs> so um i'll talk about my nose and then people will comment but what i get the most of is just really kind of generic you know hey beautiful yeah you know and I think what's funny is like your your TikToks, a lot of your TikToks and a lot of your reels are are pretty. Uh, I, I don't want to say standard, but they're normal TikToks. You're not really doing anything too crazy. Like you're just, it's just your life. And a lot of the TikToks are you know trends that I'll do. I say half of them are about trends, and then the other half are like me just talking about my day. Yeah, yeah. And actually, those ones do have been doing really well. Really. Yeah. See, I can't talk about my day. My days are so boring. It's honestly so I mean, am I. But I, I, well, yeah. <laughs> but but I mean. I mean, you've been here. I've taken like probably four naps since you've been here. But like <laughs> I, one of the things that I thought was really cool about one of the reels that you did is you were showing how you were building a deck. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. But he isn't straight, guys. Let's get this straight, first of all, because a lot of people are kind of hating on him a little bit, saying that he's pretending to be gay. 
This, yeah, I'm this, getting the. This girl is not straight. I'm just letting you know right now. No, no where, there's no heterosexual. There is no, here. yeah. So, but, but, but let's talk about what you've been doing to your backyard. Yeah, absolutely. So, I have a pretty nice sized backyard, and just in the last couple of years, have been getting into like pretty serious DIY projects. Uh -huh. So, this is probably the fourth deck I've built, and definitely the largest at this point. Dang. Yeah, and it's all YouTube learned so don't sleep on youtube <laughs> <laughs> also be careful when you're walking on his deck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there might be some loose boards here and there <laughs> um how long did that project take you um it's actually not completely finished there's still some cosmetic work to be done um but i spent saturday and sunday a couple weeks ago and i did about 10 hours of work each day just straight <sighs> and that doesn't include you know going to the store and buying i actually had everything delivered this time now is this something you did by yourself or did you have somebody help? i had a friend help me oh, yeah okay, okay. yeah I, I think it'd be nearly impossible to do it all by myself yeah you're dealing with like thing. upwards of 16 foot planks of board, of board so if you guys want to see that that story you can go onto his instagram and you can see pieces of it he, he does finish it and he does jump in that pool finally i did yes and it, it looks really good i'm, I'm i want to hire him to do my deck <laughs> in the backyard he'd probably do good also um okay so you've been doing that so i want to talk to you about so before you got into all this social media stuff, um, what were you doing before you did that? Like, like, because obviously something kind of catapulted you into just doing this. Right. But um, what were you doing before? For since I, I mean, I was 16, I've been working in restaurants and bars, mm -hmm. um, just different uh, hospitality, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I started out from like the lowest entry level position, which was a shop boy on the yes. weekends <laughs> <laughs> i was selling shots in my underwear at the gay clubs when i was no sorry so when i was 16 17 i was working at panera bread or something like that right once i hit 18 right to the bars selling shots in my underwear eventually very quickly i got tired of that <laughs> went to bar backing eventually that turns into bartending and uh, most recently managing in um, a hotel nice nice and you like it though i mean you obviously sort of like it if you were doing it I think for the time being, I really enjoyed it. Um, it really worked out for me. And honestly, when I made that step to like manager is when it all went downhill. I was like, screw this. Because <laughs> I think that's when you see like the end of the line of like what you're doing. You know, when you're a bartender or a server or whatever it is, you still have so much time and so many options available. Right. But then you take that step and you start to feel a little trapped. You're like, oh, my God, is this going to be the rest of my life? Right, right. And you then know? you're like, there's nothing above this unless I own, open my own bar. Like exactly yeah. no absolutely yeah and um did you know do you know what bar stands for no i just learned this today and i was gonna tell you because I, I was on the internet of course and i saw this bar stands for beer in alcohol room is that true that is so true <laughs> that is i didn't know that i didn't know that either yeah bar in alcohol okay sorry okay there no that's go. interesting there that's interesting just if you want fyi Okay. I love that. <laughs> so okay. it's like when I learned that deli is short for delicatessen. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> you didn't know that? Come <laughs> no, on. I learned that James, recently. Stop it. Okay, stop. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um you were a shot boy. Yes. Made a lot of money selling shots. Set records. Records were made. Yeah. <laughs> records pictures were made. are on walls. <laughs> it was Somewhere this, on Facebook there are pictures. Was this in Philadelphia or Florida? Philadelphia, Philadelphia. right? Yeah. Yeah. Philadelphia. So, um, do you have like a big family? Like, do, do they, do, are they, are you close to your family? Like, how did that, how does that yeah, play um, into what you're doing now? It doesn't really. I don't, um, I do have, I have a medium sized family. I have a lot of brothers. Um, for, well, I'd say I have a lot of brothers. I have three brothers, but I did just meet somebody who has 14 siblings. So, like, that's crazy. That's insane, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, chill out. That's I know who you're talking about. Yeah. It's like they have like a litter. I know. I can't even imagine keeping up. I don't even have 13 friends. I can't imagine keeping up with 13, 13 siblings. I know. You know. Yeah. But um, <laughs> so I have three brothers. And I mean, I wouldn't say that it really ties in to what I do now in any way. Um, I'm sure they judge me a little bit for it. But um, are they su are they, they're supportive, though? Are oh, they? yeah. I love my brothers. They're my best friends. All right. Are, yeah. you, are you younger, older? I'm younger. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you mean by that. <laughs> <laughs> you have those young, yo, those, those little brother vibes. Little totally. Brother vibes. Yeah. <laughs> My middle, the, we all perfectly align in our placement of when, which we were born. Uh -huh. Oldest brother is so older. Middle brother is so middle. 
Really? Yeah, like painfully so. And you're so Aries. I'm such an Aries. <laughs> Baby boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, that's cool. That's cool. So um, I know earlier you were telling me how uh, your family is kind of like from uh, Spain or like you have descent, like you have yeah, some relatives or something. On my dad's side, um, I, I don't know any of the family in Spain, but all of the lineage is from Spain. That's cool. Yeah. So I did go to Spain, but because I don't know anybody. You really couldn't visit? Mm, no, but I did feel the vibes. You did? You're yeah. like, you felt like it was the mother country? Yeah, I felt like I'm in my homeland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. All right, so you're working um, at this hotel place, right? Correct. What kind of inspired you or did you meet somebody um, that got you doing social media a lot more than what you were doing before? Because like I said, you just literally a month ago yeah. are, are kind of blowing up right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I did meet um, a creator who's very well known. His name, and I know you know Art. Right. Everybody knows Art. He's the best. Yeah. But I had recognized. And he's all right. Yeah, he's okay. <laughs> he's okay. He's a no, he's no, I'm just kidding. I love him. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I met Art. Um, he was actually visiting Fort Lauderdale, um, the beach, and that's where I was working. And we very like instantly hit it off. I recognized him from his videos. But um, and he like really he did a lot to help me out. I I really like appreciate everything he's done, and I feel like part of me will always like owe him something. Maybe not owe him something, but just be appreciative. Absolutely. I'm so grateful for him because he kind of like taught. He, I mean, he taught me so much in just like the five days that he was here that I, I saw him and we spent the, like, like a lot of time together. Yeah. Um, And he essentially just like. Like silicone based versus water based. It was all silicone. Yeah. Okay. That's what I figured. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, he was amazing. He was instrumental. I mean, he helped me set up my new account, my new Instagram, my new TikTok and um, he really like helped me reboot my OnlyFans in a more effective way that was going to help me promote it a lot better. Um, and f actually really just like make me feel more comfortable about doing it in the first place. Right. Um, because I mean, cause that, that's a huge step. It's a huge step and it's really kind of scary to get involved in because a lot of, I mean, if you don't really know what you're doing, you feel like this is going to be tied to me forever. Like I have to go out and I have to show everything and I have to do everything. Right. And the question is, are you going to make money? You know? Right. So there's a lot of hesitation, but he really introduced me to a way of doing it that was really comfortable and it let me take steps. But at the same time, those small steps that I felt like I was taking turned into actually huge steps in just the, the three weeks. So in that time, I mean, everything has just exploded like right. so significantly. It exploded so much that you've actually not working at the restaurant anymore. I right? did. I quit. Uh, yeah. Does, does that feel good to do that though? It feels really good because it wasn't just like I'm leaving and I'm going to focus. It was like I was also kind of being pushed out of my job too. Right. So I made a couple of TikToks about that. So I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Watch yeah. it. Watch it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no. But that's good though. So you're, you, it gives you this this sense of freedom. Okay. So. You were with Art for like five days. What did you guys do? Like what all? Did you, so he taught you how to do like TikToks. So he, oh. yeah. I mean, when we first started hanging out, I had never made a TikTok before. Um, I was really, sorry. I thought it was like pretty cringe, you know? And he just like helped me to like embrace the cringe, which is such a fundamental step in like walking into. It is. Yeah. You have to just embrace like looking silly and like. I don't want to say representing yourself in a way that you wouldn't. You're normally, selling yourself, but... and you have to sell yourself to the best of your ability. Exactly. You like you need to spread. Like you need a large market. You know. Oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be able to like spread to a large market, and that's going to be people that you don't normally like. You're marketing yourself to people that you don't know, you know, right. and you have to appeal to a lot of people. And so he helped me to get over that. And just watching him and his success, I mean, he has just done such amazing things for himself. Um really helped me and then honestly like after the first like couple of tries and it just became so easy to just kind of laugh at myself right you know and but he also sh helped me sorry the question was how did our yeah what would y'all do you know oh so we made tiktoks together um he introduced me to a lot of people you know who are also doing it and who people who can help me um and yeah eventually i just kind of started he he ins he insisted that you know once i leave and i go back to new york city like you've got to keep doing it and it's exactly what i did and i had no idea what i was doing at first but you know i threw a bunch of stuff at the wall and some are sticking and i'm i'm still throwing things at the wall and seeing what's working but right. um and it's hard uh i remember so i met art probably like i'm gonna say 3 years ago mm -hmm. 4 years ago and this is when he was like a peasant he was nobody <laughs> you know and uh 
he was trying to get me to do t- I still don't do TikToks, but he was still he was trying to get me to do it. And mm-hmm. I was like, all right, I can't. I'm an old dog. Like I'm just I can't do it. Yeah. And he would be like, No, you gotta push the timer, you gotta do this, <laughs> you gotta go back, and then you cut right here and you do I'm like, you see, you're already I lost. Yeah. I yeah. can't do it. Well, that that man has the most like business central mind. Like he knows what he's doing better than I've ever seen anybody do. And not only that, but he's so committed and yes. like so um proactive in everything he does. Like he does not fuck around. Yeah. Well, I remember <laughs> when we talked, he would, he was, his, I mean, he told me, I remember when we first met, he told me, he goes, I'm going to be famous. And I was like, good for you. You should. He's like, I am. I'm going to, I know what I need to do. And I'm going to, you know, I want, I came from this other country and my mom is still there and I want her to be here. And, you know, he just went through all this stuff and I was just like, well, good for you. Yeah. Now take the picture and shut up. <laughs> it's that confidence <laughs> that really works for him though. And that confidence is, um, What's it called? Something like, like contagious. It's contagious. Yeah, yeah ex- exactly. And it, it totally spread out because he would keep on telling me, he's like, you have everything it takes. You know, you have the looks, you have the personality, you know. Right. And I didn't think so. You know what I mean? But right. I mean, I said, fuck it. I'll try anyway. Sorry, I keep cursing. But. No, it's OK. And then so what's funny is I reached out to you before I even knew you knew art. Right. And um, I don't remember where I saw you. And it sh- it was probably one of your reels that just came up on my on my Instagram feed, and I was like, "Who the fuck is this?" Yeah, I was like, "I've never seen this guy before." And I th- and I was telling you how I like to reach out to um, people that are are newer and don't really aren't really huge yet, right? Um, just because I find that more interesting, yeah, you know. And absolutely. And then I like watching people grow. Like I love when I work with somebody and you know, three months later, they're huge, mm-hmm. you know, absolutely just like art, you know what I mean? Like people, it's funny because I'll, I'll post a picture of art and they'll be like, Oh my God, when did you take that picture? I'm like, that was like three years yeah. ago. Like he was a baby. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. Um, well, I think one of the best parts about being new is that I have, I, you know, I still have the ability to decide how I'm being represented and how people are going to see me. Right. And so I've been, I haven't been taking that for granted at all. And I just want to make sure that the best side, because I know, like, I mean, the amount of hate I get already is ridiculous, and I, I had, I would like to say it's unwarranted, but I also know I'm dealing with the internet here. You know what I mean? Right, right. So I've learned to embrace the hate because it's engagement. You know. Yeah. <laughs> See, and I'm the opposite. When people bitch about me on my on this channel, like, because yeah. I do YouTube and I do look here, people are gonna bitch and be like, he's talking about himself again. He can fuck or can't talk. <laughs> like, I do YouTube, I do pictures, I do you know reels. Yeah. So I have a lot of stuff out there, and so like I do get a lot of. Mm-hmm comments back but i get pissed and i i write back and i'm like fuck you motherfucker don't you fuck yeah Yeah. and i'm like and van will be like take it away get it with the phone yeah um i don't do that because i don't know i feel like i'm kind of fragile with i you know i'm still new and i'm trying to take everything carefully and i don't want to get a reputation as like a hot-headed right maniac i don't give a fuck period fuck (laughs) with me (laughs) i'm so over (laughs) watch now that people are going to be like you're an asshole Uh, yeah totally i'm not i I mean i just if it if it cuts me deep Mm -hmm. and it hurts my feelings totally that's when i get really sad yeah you just want to like hurt their feelings because i'm like yeah because i'm like dude like it takes a lot to like come out here and do this totally and i don't even have to do this and it's like i would say like 95 percent of the hate i get are from accounts that have no followers no picture no post oh yeah so it's like so it's almost more menacing (laughs) i'm like who is the person (laughs) on the other side it's your brother is it my mom like (laughs) yeah right i would believe go to bed man (laughs) yeah put your clothes on it's a lot worse than that yeah (laughs) <laughs> no, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. What kind of like how, what what's your experience with uh dealing with um like only fan stuff? Like um how did you know you were going to be comfortable with it? Because I know like a lot of like a lot of guys that I've talked to that are on the fence about doing it, they're just they don't they don't know. Like they're like I don't mm-hmm. know if I'm comfortable yet. I don't know what I'm going to do. Like what kind of like was your point where you're like, okay, you know, I can do this. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. I can, it's, I, you know. Well, I feel like at a, at a young age, I moved into the city and I was doing a lot of things on my own. And so living that way for so long, I really kind of learned that I, I always felt like no matter what I did, it couldn't hurt my image because I was always doing, I was at least being true to myself. And I mean, you know, I would go around Philadelphia in like ridiculous outfits, bleach blonde hair and like work in the bars. And whenever I put myself out there, it, people appreciated it, you know. Right. And so I've never really been afraid to put myself out there in any type of way 
whether it's, you know, looking ridiculous or, you know, having an OnlyFans, you know, because everybody knows the reputation that comes with that. Right. Um, I've gotten a lot of like negative feedback always, you know, and eventually you learn to just not let it bother you and to just keep. So I would say it would take a lot for me to like hear something from somebody that like made me question if what I was doing was appropriate or like the right thing. Right. Right. Um, I, I was watching this thing, uh, and it's, I guess, I think it's a trend because this is the third guy that I've seen do a TikTok about it. How, like when people ask you, what do you do? Mm -hmm. And he's like, I do like, cause he drives a car, nice car and he like, you know, oh, has yeah, nice yeah, clothes. Yeah. And they're like, well, what do you do? And he's like, you know, he doesn't know how to answer. He's like, what do I tell him to do only fans or do I tell him to do social media? And right. he'll be like, when I tell him I do only fans, they kind of like, oh. Right. And then when he tells them he does social media, they're like, oh, so you do OnlyFans. Right. Yeah, He's like, absolutely. so you're, you're screwed Yeah. either way. I just think it's dumb that there's still like this connotation, like this stigma stigma mm -hmm. on it. Because it's it's like people, I think it's like one of those things where like it's, uh, Misery Loves Company where it's like people are mad that you can do that and they can't. Right. And I, I also think that. You know, everybody's OnlyFans experience is different. And when people ask me, oh, what do you do? You know, and again, this is very new. I usually just resort right to modeling because for the most part, that's what I've done. Right. You know, up until this point. And the fisting. <laughs> and the fisting, yeah. <laughs> but I, I don't lead with that. <laughs> I've never fisted, guys. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> subscribe for more. <laughs> but if you subscribe, you can really see if... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll find out for sure. But um, I think that the reason I also say that is because, I mean, and the people who ask me, I, don't, I mean, I don't know these people. You know what I mean? Right. I was out with Colt the other night, like last night, and people were like, oh, what do you do? I was like, oh, I model. And it's like one reason, I guess, and it's maybe a little contradictory to what I just said, but it's like I think saying OnlyFans will give people the wrong idea of exactly what I do. You know, and you, right. you can only imagine where their mind goes when you say that. Right. Um. So – just being a little bit careful about how I represent myself is another way that um, I protect like that sense of what I do. And my, I guess like my own sense of peace and calmness, you know, right. if I was just going around saying like, Oh, I do only fans or like I'm this or I'm that um, it can get out of control. And like you lose control over your reputation, you know? Right. Right. So if you just keep it really narrow and if people ask more than like, sure, you know, like this happened last night, I was, I told this guy, he was like, what do you do? I was like, I'm a model. And he was like, oh, what agency? I was like, oh, it's independent. He was like, oh, and do you do OnlyFans too? I'm like, yeah, you, you know. Yeah. You yeah. know, but I, at least I didn't lead with that and then let their mind go. Straight. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I like to have a little bit more control over. Yeah, but that was kind of a smart ass thing to say. Well, what agency? You know, fuck you. Don't worry about it. Agency, Tom Ford. How about that? Yeah, bitch. New York City. Willamina. I don't know. <laughs> Willamina, <I don't> know. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> have you heard of Bella Hadid? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so have I. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> I work with her. <laughs> Have you heard of Taylor Swift? Yeah, we're friends. That's mm -hmm. how. That's my girl. <laughs> okay. I was in the 1989 tour with all the women. We yeah. walked out on the stage. Period. Um, so, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. People uh, oftentimes, um, I mean, I think it's easier for me because I'm a photographer also. So, you know, I kind of lead with that. And then they're like, they're like, wow, you must be doing really good. And I'm like, yeah, but I also do OnlyFans. And then they look at me like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, like the stuff that I produce, I have on OnlyFans, right. you know. Um. So, so I get that. And then they're kind of like, well, what kind of stuff? And I'm like, well, it's $9.99 a month. Yes. And you can check that to out. To find out. Yeah. Exactly. And please message me only on there. Those are the only messages I answer. Absolutely. And I think one actually like the best thing about the OnlyFans and why I don't have any like shame in saying it is like I have complete creative control over everything that I do. Correct. You know, and so if it does turn into something bigger outside of that, you know, that, that'd be amazing. I'm just starting. I don't know. But um, I, I have no shame in completely owning what i do you know it's all taylor's version you know i'm the sole owner of it all <laughs> it's J james's version it's james's lucky JV. james yeah <laughs> subscribe <laughs> subscribe today right now um no but that's good that's good so um you have only fans going on um you have some trips coming up don't you didn't you say you have some trips coming up yeah so i have this trip i'm on right now austin texas has been amazing thank you great Yay. um Ooh. and then i'm going to new york in early april and then so that's gonna be fun i'm gonna you know see some friends hopefully make some good tiktoks and content yeah uh, is there anybody that you would want to work with that's like like in the only fan sphere and it doesn't have to be sexual it can be just like right. going and like you know tiktoking or reels or 
Well, I, I would know, say that. Or, <laughs> God, well, fisting. I mean, the, the list. The list is just end. endless. Yeah. Ace Carter. Just kidding. <laughs> Cut that. <laughs> but, um, Ace Carter, is that what you said? <laughs> um, <let's> relax. <laughs> anyway, um, because I'm so new to it all, I really, I don't really like know a lot of the names, and I know a lot of faces, and but not really names. And honestly, if we're talking about like people I want to work with, um, yeah, I mean, they're it doesn't big. have to be they're only fans. Names, people, you know, be... I I really love the Cancel podcast with Tana Mojo and Brooke Schofield. I love the wait. Hold on. A little shout out to Tana Mojo. There you go. Unless it's Bucky Strong. But um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I love those girls. I love what they do. Um, I think it's so natural and so um, – it's just like it, they get to just be themselves, you know, and nothing's forced. And all the hate that comes their way, they just so flawlessly deal with it. So they're, they're a big inspiration. But as far as TikTok goes, um, I'm, like, really blessed to have been work with art already and I would love to work with art more. Yeah. But I don't think I have anybody, like, really on a roster that – yet that, like, I really want to work with. Yeah. Um, I feel like there's a lot of creators though in in Florida though, isn't there? I feel like there is too, but I don't know. You don't know over there, yeah. yeah. You know, I've I've been in talks with a couple creators to possibly work together, but again, it's one of those things where it's they do OnlyFans also, and they do TikTok, and it's like really navigating what I want to do, what their expectations are, and what my expectations are, especially me being new and working with bigger people. You know, they they really have the control over like you know, not what they do. They never put me in a position, but. But it's one of those things also where you don't want to uh, flub an opportunity, mm-hmm. you know, like you want to make sure that if you're going to work with them, it's going to be something that's going to be beneficial for you just as much as it is for them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, do you get a lot of DMs from people just that are just randos that are just like, let's collab, let's do some. Tick, oh, let's my do some, God. The, the colla- do- I get collab requests from people with no followers, <laughs> no profile picture. <laughs> And I'm like, well, that's just having sex at this point. <laughs> They're like, but let's collab. Let's collab, yeah. You're, wait, wait, stop. It's doing nothing for me. <laughs> Sorry. It's giving. All due respect, but it's giving nothing. one-sided deal. <laughs> it's a really bad. It is. Yeah. It seems like a very bad scenario. Okay. Yeah. So um, let's talk about your shoot today. So how do you think it went today? Oh, my God. Amazing. You have fun? I feel like so good. At Were about- you nervous about it? I don't think I was actually, and it was my first, you know, professional photo shoot. Right. You know, I don't think I was really, I was more nervous for the podcast, actually. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I always feel like this is the easiest part because it's just like talking like we do out there. Well, the thing is, again, about the pictures is that, you know, you're obviously so amazingly talented and you're very like, um, you work really well with, I can only speak for myself, but you're very like kind you're like you can use these pictures for whatever you know take your time with you know you put a lot of terms you know yeah yeah you understand what i'm saying yeah i get it but um they understand with the interview though it's like i only have so much time to like think and like i'm like thinking on my feet and like i'm representing myself right now and it's like i look like a bumbling idiot you know what i mean (laughs) (laughs) and it's like um so yeah, I don't know. <laughs> End of sentence. <laughs> well, the pictures came out great, and they came people, out so good. yeah, and I, you're, I gave you a couple already, but um, again, he's gonna have show them on his OnlyFans. Um, we took some really good pictures. We didn't, we didn't do any naughty pictures. That's enough. Relax, everybody, mm-hmm. relax. Yeah, chill. Um, but we did take some really good, or did sexy. We? You're gonna you know, have to subscribe to find out. <laughs> But we did take some really good sexy pictures, and um, I was actually pretty pretty uh, surprised at how good they came out too. Not like because it was you, but just because I have been working my ass off the past mm-hmm. like two weeks, and I'm just like so burnt out creatively that I'm just worried that I just my pictures are gonna suck. No, they were so amazing. They were so good. I was, and I know what you can do because I've seen your work, obviously. But like, I was so impressed by the pictures from not not only my like I was impressed by myself, but I yeah. mean also impressed to see your work for like firsthand. Um, some of them are just like, I'm like, wow, these are a sure fired path to a full on modeling career for me. For- <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'll be in Vogue next week. <laughs> All right, girly, relax. No, it's, gonna <laughs> it's the confidence. <laughs> it is. It is. No, but what's good about it is that you are going to, I know, I mean, even that posting that one picture you did today, I'm sure you're going to get like shit tons of photographers reaching out to you now. I sure hope so. I, you will. Yeah. And you got to work with a lot of people just, you know. Mm-hmm. Like I said, just kind of let me know who they are before so that way I can make sure you're... Totally. I'm going to have you vet out everybody. You're safe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. I'm going to be like, okay. <laughs> That's like one thing about being you know, independent with OnlyFans everything is that, I mean, you don't always know who you're working with. No. 
So I mean, even when you get to when you work with creators that are big, you still don't know their personality. Totally. You know. Totally. Um, and that's why I think uh, also like with OnlyFans people who do like those kind of collabs, I I, I would be nervous. You know? Absolutely. And I think that's why I'm trying to navigate like TikTok and Instagram the way I am, where I'm trying to put as much of my personality out there as possible because I want it all to be just out there on the table. You know, I'm just so willing to just like, here's all of me. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Because I just don't really want to hold anything back. Right, right. But you don't want to do it all at once either. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's easy to take steps because you're still getting comfortable with what you're saying and what you're putting out there. Yeah. So, okay, so let's talk about, um, let's, let's do, let's do a funny story. What's a good funny story? What, um, tell me about your first girlfriend. Cause I know you had a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you're gay, but like, I know you had a girlfriend cause you look like the type of boy that had a girlfriend when you were like six years old or something. And you should have told oh your mom my God. that you were going to get married <laughs> and you were going to have kids. My mom loves to tell the story about when I was in second grade and I came home and I asked her, I was like, mom, how many girls am I allowed to marry? <laughs> and she was like, one, I was like, mom, I have to pick out a five. Because I was just such a bachelor in, in elementary <laughs> school. I had like five girlfriends in second grade. I still remember some of their names too. They were cutie pies. <laughs> <laughs> that is so great. Yeah. Okay, but tell me what well, tell me one name. Um, Renee. Renee. That's yeah. a good name. Yeah, it's a beautiful name. And we actually ended up being friends for a lot of school. Um, and I actually haven't seen her in a long time. So there you go. Maybe you should reach out to old Renee. I know that she's, she's like doing. extremely smart. She's like an engineer. She was going to an amazing school. You really should probably so out of my jump league. Back, so out of, jump back on that straight yeah. boat. <laughs> that boat is burned. That is the Titanic now at this point. <laughs> it's not coming back. There's no way. Um, so you were a little heartbreaker. Uh, what did you do in high school? Like, were you involved in anything like high school, college? Did you do like, you know, I actually didn't go to college cheer but... camp or <laughs> dance team. No, I did nothing in high school. I was and that was intentional. I was really, really shy, really, really nervous, like the most awkward kid. And a lot of it was because I was gay and like I had no idea how to like. But I did everything I could to fly completely under the radar. I had no friends. I wanted to make keep it that way. I wanted to make sure that when I walked through the hallways, people didn't even see me. Are you for real? No, I'm dead ass. Yeah. Wow. So that's when, so opposite to what you are. I now. know. So when people would even look at me like and ask me a question, I would just like blank panic. And I I remember one time I had to go and um to do a presentation for history class. And I remember I went up and I was holding a piece of paper and I was just like shaking Shake. violently. And so I like put it down on the chalkboard. And it fell. Oh. And the teacher was like, just hold it. And so I picked it up and I was like, and I put it down on the desk. And she was like, just hold it. And so I just was like. <laughs> and weirdly enough, one of the kids showed me his nipple while I was doing that presentation and just made it so much worse. Oh my God. So yeah, I spent all of high school just trying to completely avoid like ever speaking to anybody. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Colt, put your nipples away. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so tell me about the first person or the first guy that you met that you, that you, the very first one. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be someone that's serious or so, just the very like the first, first guy, person that you were just like, <gasps> I'm a homo. Oh my God. I knew for a long time. So it's kind of hard. I knew, I've, I knew for like a very long time, like when I was little. But like, who was the first guy? Like, I guess, yeah, your first kiss. Who was your first kiss? So my first kiss uh, was he on the football team? No, 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 no. The, the rugby team. So I I was living in uh, just outside of Philadelphia, and there was a concert, and a friend of mine who was a girl, she knew I was gay at the time, and we were like, let's go to the concert. It was like very gay. What concert was it? Marina and the Diamonds. Oh, God. like really gay. <laughs> <laughs> um, for her Electra Heart album, which is a banger. But um, yeah. So we went to this concert together. And it was just two of us, and you know, obviously, I had no expectations going in. But at some point, I was standing right next to this guy, and he were like the same age, probably like sixteen each, you know. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't really remember the full details, but we kind of just were like looking at each other and started flirting a little bit, and then we kissed. Wow. I know. Okay. <laughs> You're like, I'm in love. Yeah, it's I had a boner. It's happening. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but then, um. We kept in touch for like a couple of weeks. He lived maybe like an hour away from me, and then he ghosted me. His loss. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Where is he now? He's probably watching you on 
I don't know. He's probably TikTok. working five below somewhere or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he's definitely subscribed to the OnlyFans. He definitely yeah. is. I think he's messaging you right now. Hey, so now, okay, so that was your first kiss. So who, let's see, not your first kiss, but I want to say your first time, but like your first time that you ever, and you don't have to like explain dirty mm-hmm. details, but like the first time that you had sex with somebody, was it somebody that you were in love with or was it like a fly by night type of thing? I don't know if like in love is the right. Well, it was more than just a, I, I say, met him and then. No. Yeah. So I would say maybe in love. It was like a really, so it was, so, it was a guy that I knew from high school actually. And he was straight, very DL. Well, he was obviously not straight, but he was very DL. Yeah. And the summer after, my senior year we became really good friends Mm -hmm. um he's like stayed lived at my house all the time like it was just like finally i have someone i can be friends with you know what i mean and right it was you let your guard down a little bit yeah and it was never really like in a gay way but i also eventually understood why he wanted to be my friend Mm. you know and we're still friends to this day but um we spent a lot of time together and like over the couple of weeks of us becoming really good friends it eventually got kind of i don't want to say romantic because he was really like in the closet right but it got a sexual sometimes, and it was a kind of we- weird. But um, like weird for you, or weird just a weird situation. It was weird because it was like we would act in sexual ways and then like pretend it never happened, mm, you know. Yeah. And so it it was a lot harder for him. It was a lot harder for well, him. Well, yeah, because you were. I was fine. Like you jumped you know out I mean? of the womb. And Period. <laughs> <laughs> singing the red album from Taylor Swift. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um. But we're actually still good. F- I wouldn't say we're good friends, but we're still friends. Um, we still, you know, talk on the internet sometimes. But um, it was it was definitely like a romance. You know what I mean? The fact that we were able to bond like that, um, and he let his guard down around me, and I let my guard down around him. You know, there was some definitely. You know. But are you happy that that was like the that was the? Yeah, I always feel like it could. It, maybe. I, always, yeah. I mean, I I don't regret the way anything panned out. I always feel like everything happens for a reason. But um. It was definitely like an awkward situation. I guess I'm glad that I went through it, you know. There's right. So many different facets of what a romantic relationship can be. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad that like. Did it shape you in any different way that you think that you're like after that you were you saw signs or you, you know, thought differently about things? Um, I think that really and I joke about this all the time on TikTok that like I love DL guys. But I think that there's definitely some truth to that. But I think it's because, like, deep down, they just, like, really want to be loved. And it comes from a lot of insecurity, you know? Right. And I definitely have an appreciation for, like, all the DL, DL bros out there. Hit me up. <laughs> Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep your secret. It's just between <laughs> us, baby. <laughs> no, but I get it, though. And I feel like that that's part of your personality because that's how you were in high school. You know, mm-hmm. you wanted to be not seen. You wanted to be private. You yeah. wanted to just... Do just your thing. Float. And, yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that's kind of the, the situation. Yeah. That and now in. I have like a lot of compassion for people in those same situations. Right. Um, People who feel like they're like forced into silence, you know, they can't be themselves. Um, Yeah. I just think there's something really like sweet about it, especially because when they do open up, it's like some of the sweetest people, you know, absolutely. I mean, they just, all they want is to be loved. And when you get to see that side of them, it's just like, it's beautiful. Do you see yourself, uh, in the future, like having a family or anything like that? You know, I've gone back and forth on this for like many years. I've for so long was like, I want kids. Like I, I love working. Like I worked in a daycare for a little while. I, I like th- kids are amazing. You know, of all ages, I think that kids are so fun and creative and I love watching them learn and develop. Right. It's like, it's so fun. However, the older I get, I'm like, hold on, let me pump the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know people with kids now, and it's like, that's a lot. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. Maybe. Do you have dogs, cats? I have a dog, yeah. What kind of dog is it? She's like a mixed breed. Okay, cool. Yeah. What's the name? Callie. Callie. She's the best. See, and I feel like pets are just as much as kids. See, I love to say that I love my, um, I love my dog like she's my child. Yeah. But parents get really pissed when you say that. <laughs> parents don't like when you say no, that. No, well, screw that. Yeah. Like, it's the same thing. Like, I mean, it's all... It's, it's relative. Exactly, I mean, yeah. It's subjective. It is. And, like, I was <laughs> I was watching this video <laughs> when I was downstairs. And it was, like, this guy with his cat that was his last moments with his cat. And oh I was, like, God. crying. Yeah. I'm, like... <laughs> like, if it was my kid, I'd probably still be sad. But I don't think I'd be as sad if it was, like, Siggy. Like, I would, like, Absolutely. die. Oh, yeah. 
No, yeah, absolutely. I like agree. it's the same thing. Like it's, I would protect that dog because, for everything. You know, pet owners who don't have kids, you know, what do they have to compare it to? You know what I mean? It's, they love exactly. that pet. Like it's all because it's all they have. You know. Yeah. And, for and I feel like kids sometimes are assholes to you. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I was an asshole to my mom every once in a while, you know? I was, oh, God, I was an asshole to my mother. But at the same time, I feel like that's a reflection on the parent. You know, if your kid's so an asshole. Fault. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so, mom, thanks. <laughs> yeah, sorry, mom. But maybe look in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no no but that's what that's just it like i said i feel like with my animals like you know they don't want to hurt you they Mm-mm. just want to love you except for cats cats are kind of crazy but so true <laughs> but no but dogs, i yeah. mean like that when you've experienced like the endless love between like a dog and its owner yeah i mean it's beautiful i love my dog yeah and she loves me like 10 times more than i could ever love her now would you ever do putt play <laughs> ridiculous actually there's a picture of me here it goes <laughs> there's a picture of me after my 22nd birthday that i have not seen since the picture was taken i just i really wish i had this picture but in philadelphia we have this leather bar called the bike stop and i used to hang out there not because i was into leather i wasn't at all but it, it's just a cool bar yeah um they have a pool table it's a lot of fun but um i w- i remember i was oh, it's my 22nd birthday i was just blackout drunk and i left the bar with my friends and there were two pups there and um, I remember just taking a picture with them in either they're in either arm, and I'm just like, just <laughs> wasted. <laughs> I, all I remember is taking the picture. I've never seen the picture since. Where is that? Who took it? I think a friend of mine that I don't talk to anymore. Uh, yeah. You gotta reach out. We gotta get that picture. It's an ex, so we- I'm not doing that. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> Keep the picture. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah. I, um. Yeah. That's just. Yeah. That picture would be everywhere if I had. I put that picture on it picture on a t-shirt oh it's gonna come out oh my god i hope it'll be out I soon hope it better i'm surprised you didn't run into any pups last night i don't think we did did we no no pups last night no pups. it was like pretty tame on the kinky side of things last night that's interesting i always feel like every time people go out here they're like there is a bunch of dogs outside no like, iron bear was like so slow and chill interesting it was for a twink saturday bars. Too. Oh, it was a friday today's yeah. saturday the twink bars on the other hand were just oozing <laughs> They were <laughs> maximum <it>. capacity. <laughs> yeah, it was horrible. <laughs> There's only room for one Gosh, tweak here. I know it's me. <laughs> Watch out, Austin. This town ain't big enough. This town ain't big I'm enough gonna... for the two of us. <laughs> I got to think. Well, it's kind of sad. You have to leave so early in the morning tomorrow, so I, I don't know. think you're going to be able to leave, go out tonight. But, know. you know, you'll be back. Maybe. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would like a better... Um, a better well because this time you're it was really fast it was really fast yeah and next time you come now that i know that we get along you can stay a lot longer and you can do your own thing and go, totally like, do yeah things. i'll rent a car too yeah that'd be nice yeah because yeah, everything in Austin's so far from each other it really well, is yeah talking about coming back i really think that next time you come back it'll be a lot easier because we'll be able to do a lot more and um hopefully next time when you come we can have like someone else here too to kind of help because I think you worked really well, um, even though other people were here. I think you mm-hmm. I think it did really good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, what do you see? Where do you see yourself? Like, if you could, if you could picture yourself, where do you see yourself? Like in another like six months, like by by you know by the fall. That's an interesting question. What do um, you What do you want to happen? So I'll, I will answer the question, but I also want to preface it by saying that I think one of the what I like, what I choose to do is to not imagine it because that lets every opportunity that comes to me be feel fresh and not so planned. And so far, just kind of going with the flow has been working out really well. But if I do have to picture myself in six months, um, I think ideally working with just having as much reach as possible, more, more followers, not just for the sake of followers, but because I'm building, I'm trying to build a brand essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, so I want to work with, you know, big, bigger name people, meet bigger name people um and i really want to take the more of a modeling route right you know and look to start maybe working with big brands and i don't know if that's going to take six months if it's going to take a year you really can't know ever you know somebody could message you tomorrow and completely change the course of your life so well and i i I hopefully the clothes that we picked um and that you wore you know you have to uh tag those people also because you never Mm -hmm. know right you know never know what will happen um 
because a lot of people will just send you free stuff. And, right. You know, that's also really good to get free stuff. Yeah. Also. Um, well, cool. So I just wanted to say thank you for sitting here and talking to us. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, and we'll do it again when you come back again. Because I'm sure wait. next time you come back, there'll be a lot more to talk about. Yeah, I can't wait to like compare the two. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. And um, we'll get some pup masks. For Let's you. do it. Might as well. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll go from there. But um, you guys need to go follow him on Instagram and TikTok. Hopefully TikTok will still be around. <laughs> yeah, let's pray. Yeah. Good um, riddance. Oh, just kidding. Just right. Kidding. Get out of here. Um, but go follow him. And what is it again? James Lucky SZ. Yes. Go follow him on Instagram. Go follow him on OnlyFans. Twitter, um, YouTube. Twitter, YouTube. OnlyFans. Everywhere. I'll put, again, I'm, I'm getting better at this. If you guys look at the video, I'm putting their Instagram on the bottom. From, I'm putting it on the bottom. It's down there. I don't know if I can put any other links on there because YouTube is such a pain in the ass, but I am putting their Instagram handle on there so you guys will be able to follow them on there. Um, but thank you for being here. Thank you. And hopefully we'll see you again real soon. And the Absolutely. next time we see you, you'll have like a million followers. And a and million dollars. And a million dollars. Yes. And then you can pay for us yes. to go You're going to get flued out next time. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. But anyway, well, thank you very much for being here. Thank and we'll you. see you guys again soon. Thanks. Bye.